Hi everyone, welcome to Peak Survival. I'm here with Jenny. She's a medical toxicologist here in Arizona. If you've been following a few of the videos we've been doing together, you'll see that uh, she's very knowledgeable. Uh, she's been explaining lots of things about spiders and other creepy crawlies out in the desert. So the next one we're going to be talking about is the brown recluse spider. Thanks. So the brown recluse is a spider that's surrounded by a lot of myth and urban legend, mm -hmm. uh, as are all spiders. Sure. People really tend to fear what they don't understand, and a lot of things are blamed on spiders um, when we don't understand them and when spiders probably aren't actually the culprit. So specifically to focus on the brown recluse spider. Uh, it's a spider that does have venom that can cause some tissue destruction. Mm -hmm. So people see pictures online of big fungating skin lesions and necrosis and horrible surgeries and people losing limbs that get blamed on a brown recluse when oftentimes there's another disease process that's going on. In fact, probably most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it is true that brown recluse venom can cause tissue destruction. So it can cause ulcerating skin lesions mm -hmm. that look pretty bad. But most of the time, a true brown recluse skin bite actually won't do that. Um, most people heal just fine. They may get some local pain and a little bit of redness or even a small ulceration, but most of them heal just fine. Um, you can get the big skin lesions, and sometimes in children you can actually have systemic illness for, from them as well. Mm -hmm. But one of the most important things to remember about the brown recluse spider is that it's got a, uh, an endemic area where it lives in the United States, and stable populations have really never been found outside this area. So if you live in a non-endemic area, you're probably not going to be exposed to a brown recluse. And people are frequently asking, well, what if I traveled to one of those areas and one got in my suitcase? And certainly it's a remote possibility, but the amount of people in non-endemic areas that are reporting these bites is far too many to sure. explain that. Yeah. Because when uh, spider experts go and look in these areas, we can't find populations of the spider. Mm -hmm. And when we're in endemic areas, they're very, very easy to find. They coexist with people in and around their homes. You go down to the basement of someone in an endemic area and you can find thousands of these spiders in a home where a family's been living for years and no one's ever been bitten. So the reason they're called recluses is because they're shy and reclusive. Yeah, they're sense. not particularly aggressive. They normally only bite in defense. But when you're there, when they are there, they're very easy to find. Okay. So the fact that we haven't found them in the rest of the country really suggests strongly that they are not there. Mm -hmm. So in other areas where these bites are being diagnosed, often what happens is a patient will go to their doctor with a skin lesion uh, and say, hey, I think I was bitten by a spider. And instead of running tests to try to figure out what it is or making a clinical diagnosis, the physician will say, oh, it's probably a brown recluse spider bite. And this helps to propagate the myth. But a lot of times this happens in areas where brown recluses have never been found. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a long list of other diagnoses that can look exactly the same. There's no way to look at a skin lesion and know for certainty what it is that caused it. Mm. It can be a bacterial infection, and that's actually the most common disease that's misdiagnosed as a spider bite, is a skin abscess caused by staph bacteria. Okay. But there's a lot of other things it could be. It could be a chemical exposure, it could be a fungal or viral infection, mm -hmm. uh, it could be a vascular problem. Really, the list is extensive. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, there was an interesting case in the literature of a gentleman who noted a lesion on his shin and was diagnosed with a brown recluse spider bite. And then after doing some reading, he realized he wasn't in an endemic area. And when he thought about what he had done the day before, he realized he'd been cleaning his oven. So he took a spot of oven cleaner and actually wiped it on his other leg and developed the exact same ulcerating lesion. Oh, there you go. So as I mentioned, there's a long list of other things it could be. And it's very important not to use spider bite as a knee-jerk diagnosis for a skin lesion that you don't understand. Yeah. Because it could miss something treatable and preventable like a bacterial infection yeah. or something life-threatening like a cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's very important, especially if you're not in an endemic area, not to blame skin lesions on the brown recluse spider bite.